Let's talk about supplements. So we talked about a couple of things when we reviewed that glutathione pathway that you guys can see the video on. Alpha lipoic acid is very important in recycling glutathione. Also, milk thistle is a really good tonifier and does help support glutathione levels as well. Vitamin C is really important, right? That helps with reduced glutathione and help activating it again. That was also very, very important. Oh, here's, we here's about, one thing. Go ahead. Here's yeah. one thing I forgot to mention. This was in the paper, so I kind of went on a tangent on the, on the nebulizer. But in that particular paper you and I were discussing, it, it, I was wrong. It is true that you can increase, at least this was in rats. So is, is it the same in humans? Maybe. But by just giving an IV dose of NAC, they were able to increase glutathione in the brain. So what about oral NAC? Does that increase glutathione in the brain? I don't know. But at least in that paper, IV NAC did boost brain levels of glutathione. That's great. Yeah, I imagine over time, the amino, those amino acids will eventually cross. I know sometimes the amino acids um, cross the blood-brain barrier and then the glutathione is converted in the brain. I think glutathione may be too big to, to cross the, the brain itself. I know some of the amino acids like cysteine, I know L-cysteine can cross the blood brain and can then convert to glutathione in the brain. So I know cysteine's a big one. I don't think NAC can, but L-cysteine can. You think just because it's smaller? Mm -hmm. Yeah, smaller because mm -hmm. NAC gets broken down into cysteine mm -hmm. by the body. And some people, they say just take cysteine because I know a lot, cysteine's very important with adrenaline. And we know adrenaline's a, um, a really big nervous system amino acid, right? And we know dopamine actually gets converted to adrenaline and we know dopamine to adrenaline, that pathway involves sulfur in particularly cysteine. So I wonder, I'm just thinking out loud just for, for my purposes. So I wonder uh, people that are having issues with anxiety, if they would be able to reduce their anxiety by boosting up that pathway, working more on sulfur. Sulfur can be really helpful. Now, in my line, I have a product called Detox Aminos that will have some cysteine, some N-acetylcysteine, some calcium to glucurate, which is a really good binder for mold and for hormones, um, methionine, cysteine, taurine, glycine. So all the amino acids, which is really helpful. I like that a lot. Uh, I'll also do a lot of the, the phase one nutrients, a lot of the antioxidants, a lot of the B vitamins, uh, milk thistle, those kind of things for phase one support, right? Phase one is taking toxins that are fat soluble and converting them to water soluble. Phase two is going to be water soluble excreted out the body. And that involves lots of sulfur, all the amino acids I just mentioned. And with some people, we may do a combination of L or liposomal glutathione. We may do S acetyl glutathione. There's another glutathione that has these little, these little buckyballs. Can you talk about that too? Oh yeah. I love, I love the acetylated. Yeah. So there's a couple out there with the buckyballs that basically the idea is to try to just shrink the molecular size of it. So you can kind of sneak it into the cell. So there's, you've got the liposomal where you're going to do like a sunflower and then you've got this buckyball idea. Now, I don't know if it's a carbon molecule, if this is the same thing as the C60 you and I've been talking about or what, but, right. there, but there are ways to, to make glutathione smaller. For me, I just look at the papers on it and the acetyl version is the one that I believe you have your own. I have my own as well of a, of an S acetylated glutathione. I've had people doing here, this is just a quick little debate. I've had people doing various versions of liposomal glutathione and liposomal vitamin C. And I've measured them. And many of these people are still low on the oat test for vitamin C and glutathione. So when we switch them over to like an acetylated and then just a mixed ascorbate, I see the levels come up. So it's not that I'm against the liposomal glutathione, but I'm, I'm just finding that the acetyl works just as good, if not better. And it's capsule because the liposomal generally tastes like crap. Or if you've got a really sensitive person, there's going to be citrus oil or some other flavoring to cover up the terrible glutathione taste. And then those people don't tolerate it. And then they're not compliant and then they don't get better. 100%. Yep. I totally agree. So right now I use a lot of liposomal, but you still do the as acetyl and you still get good results with that clinically. I do. Yeah, it works great. And I feel good on it. So I've done an experiment on myself where I'll go liposomal for a month and then I'll go acetyl. I feel just as good. Now it could be because my acetyl version has a gram of NAC added to it. So I'm kind of cheating because I'm really getting the NAC plus the glutathione. Yep. So maybe that's why I'm, I'm getting so much better.